Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of the Cathode Ray Podcast. Steve is back from his museum adventure. We're going to talk all about that. That's what this episode is going to be about. Steve, how you doing, mate? How was your adventure? I'm good, man. I'm still trying to catch up on things. It's like a blur the last 10 days, pretty much. I can't remember the last time I actually worked like a 90-hour week. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty much what I just got done. And then I've got home and then I've still got like a 90-hour week in front of me. So I don't know. It's going to be pretty rough, but I feel great. Thanks. That's awesome, man. Uh, so many people are really interested in the work you're doing. The last podcast had a lot of great reaction. Uh, the visual element, your presentation, people really enjoyed it. Uh, and, and we're really into it. We had a lot of views on that video. So we're going to, in a moment, we're going to get into that. You're going to tell us the story. You've just got back. It's fresh. You haven't told the stories. So we're going to hear, hear all about it. Yeah, and we're going to do the uh, visual special effects also in this because I did manage to take quite a few pictures. I organized them this morning. I didn't think I'd have that many, but it turns out I've got quite a few, definitely some to go through, and that'll help, you know, give some more context to the story. So that'll be fun. Real nice. So before we get into it, uh, by the time this podcast go out, uh, I'm going to try and drop this as soon as possible. But right now I've just dropped a video on some S video updates. So it's the the beta cores from Mike Simone. They're evolving. Mike's doing work. And also this week, um, uh, Antonio Villena sent me a couple of his prototype adapters. So it's still work in progress uh, because the as we were talking about, the S video cores will need a very simple adapter. Uh, Antonio's working on it. He sent me one and it does doesn't work all the time because it's a prototype, right? But when I got I got it uh, running PAL cores, PAL systems on my PAL TV was looking really nice. And you're like, this is like, it was hitting me with a very nostalgic feeling. Like this is the nostalgia. This is, uh, we all, I, at least I didn't back in the day play on component or RGB SCART or something like that. So I was really enjoying that. So I dropped that video yesterday with a few uh, thoughts on that. I've been working on that. And also previously, I'm working on a, another video as well. The the article series that I've been making, telling he's dreaming about CRT <laughs> yeah. prices. Right. Uh, I filmed a video version of the next one. <laughs> Okay, uh, great. It's like 20 minutes. I got to edit. It's too long. It's too long of me crapping on. So I'll work on that later in the week uh, of me telling he's dreaming about. But I did find one. There was a... Um, one unit, it's not really a dreaming one, but one guy had a Soviet Union TV with the Soviet like Union box, like with the foam and the box and the brochure. And wow. uh, it's, it's super authentic. He says that it works, um, but he wants 300 euros for it. <laughs> uh, now that's, it's not quite retro gaming though. Oh you know, gosh. it's a little no, bit no, beyond, no, no. It could, like, that could be a historical artifact almost. still, man, that's like... We could get into this because I definitely paid some prices for some crazy CRTs on this Houston trip, and we could tell, we could see if I was, I was dreaming. Were you dreaming? Like cloud like? nine, and just <laughs> throwing my money away. That'll be fun. So, yeah, uh, I'm excited so that's to see lot. that. Let's do it. Let's. Um, where do you want to start? Do you want to tell us you, you had to yeah, like sure. twenty so, hours it took you to get there? Oh my it? goodness! Yeah. So I was the crazy one. I I uh, I wanted to bring a lot of demos, and I'm like, we we talked about this. I worked my butt off for mm -hmm. the two weeks leading up to this presentation, just getting five different presentations ready to give at this um, museum. And mm -hmm. this is in Houston, Texas, which is th <laughs> thousands of miles, kilometers from where I live. So yeah, I had to do um, multiple days of driving to get there. So I left here a Sunday, packed up my old white car that if anybody's watched the vlog trips mm -hmm. knows what it looks like. It's a 97, 1997 uh, Mercury Grand Marquis, and it's in pristine shape. And it's the best hi highway ride I have, of course. So I took that and we rode, or I rode by myself, you know, the first day, 13 hours. Uh, 13 and a half hours straight all the way to Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. It was late, boy. And I, I, uh, thankfully that morning I was like, well, maybe I'll just stop and park somewhere and sleep. I was like, that's not a good idea. So I, uh, I got on Airbnb and I found like this cheap place in the middle of Little Rock that morning. They accepted me. So I, I, I got to stay and then I literally just slept there, took a shower and changed and left. The idea was that, this was Sunday. I wanted to be there Monday. My check-in in Houston was Monday afternoon. I wanted to be able to go check-in 
and then go to the museum in the afternoon. So I needed to be at the museum realistically. Um, I hope to get there by like 4 p.m. Um, <clears throat> so thankfully, uh, I didn't hit any traffic or anything, but I did still have to ride from Little Rock, which was another seven hours to the actual museum with all my stuff. And then mm -hmm. I was uh, I was able to get to checked in to my Airbnb there, and it was a mile from the museum. So I got everything I wanted out, and I left some stuff that I was going to you know, unload at the museum. So that's where I went. I went to the loading dock. I called him. I said I was there. I went to the loading dock a little bit before 4, and uh, I did the old Austin. It was a small loading dock, so I had to do the old Austin Powers with my car where I was like <laughs> back and forth in this huge, huge <laughs> bunch of traffic, you know, to get in this loading dock. And this uh, sweet lady comes out. She's she's like calm, but she's like, what are you doing, you know, <laughs> from security? <laughs> and uh, she was great. She, uh, I was like, I'm here to offload some stuff. I had a big BVM case, you know, the D20 was there. So okay, I had to get yeah. that. I had to get the flight case out. I put the BVM in the flight case and then I loaded my, uh, I did awesome. I, I put all my gear into separate Tupperware bins. And then mm -hmm. I covered Cost. it in like nice retro tech stickers and put labels on what was in each one of them. <laughs> and so they were like, oh, your organization is so impressive, you know? And I was like, yeah, thanks. I was like, yes. So <laughs> I get my stuff out. I get it loaded on the card. I get it pushed in the room. The guy um, who asked me to come out, who was in the direct kind of like managing um, this museum is uh, comes out to meet me and really nice guy. So he's like, come in here. We'll look around a bit and let you get unpacked, you can get a feel for this room. And so, um, you know, just, we got, I got in, got unloaded into this room. I'll show you some pictures of the room. Uh, let me, uh, let me pull up the screen share. That'll be fun to do now. Yeah, let's and do that. Let's Cause if you don't, ahead. if you, if you don't have the photos the whole way through, I can then just edit it back to just you and I oh, for a while. Right. So it's okay. all good. So this was, uh, uh, if you can't see it, it you know it was a pretty good sized room. I want to say the length and width of it, it would have been at least probably almost a thousand square feet or something. Just rectangular room in the middle of the museum that was closed off for this course. You can see uh, if you're looking mm -hmm. at home, the big there's a big display on the back of the wall, and that was where my PowerPoint presentation was fed. Uh, this was the night before where I had all my boards for and, and demo stuff for the 2030 laid out. And then this was a microphone stand. I wasn't using this, obviously, but that's where everything was loaded from. The presentation over here it was just a, its own setup. So I had all my 2030 parts laid out on the table. I took, in case you can't see, I took every single board broken out into itself from mm. a 2030 because I have like scrap 2030s here and a lot of boards that have cracks in them and bad parts and salvaged. And it's a perfect opportunity, you know, to actually have a good visualization of that uh, board itself, you know. So I had that. I had a little tube there to demonstrate a CRT, what a trinity. Yeah, I was going to say, like. that's not a 2030 tube, is it? No, it's like an 8-inch no. tube. It's it's junk 8-inch yeah. tube. Uh, if you see, I'm going to point to this little thing. That's actually a Trinitron gun from inside a tube. So I oh, had yeah. that broken out so they could see that. Nice. And then uh, they actually had this really cool thing they had just gotten in over here on the left, which is this arm with this white base right mm -hmm. here. This okay. was a zoom in high definition camera. Oh, and it cool. was fed to a, I didn't get a picture of the monitor, but it was another screen this size that was on the other side of the wall in mm -hmm. the corner by where this door is. Uh, it was moved in front of that door for the presentation. Mm -hmm. And it showed everything I would put on there, like live feed. And I had the ability to sit there and zoom in and out so I could point oh. out like, what a resi you could get all the way and see high definition what a resistor value was on the board from it sitting there it was the most amazing like technology that's just, very useful for explaining oh my this goodness stuff. Yeah. very useful <clears throat> so the guy kirsten was just like on top of this he knew everything he had gotten all this equipment ready and like this was i think this was the first time a lot of this stuff got to be used ever yeah, so right. um it was really, uh, I was really excited to be able to even use this, and it, it worked out perfectly. I can't, I, I don't know how, you know, sometimes you think something would screw up, but this is a view mm. of the other side of the room, just right. how I had, see, this was, so this was the day I was set up, you could tell, uh, or, 
I've got the monitor here that I was working on, and this was probably halfway through it when I was getting ready to do tests on the CRT. And I had, yeah, see, I was going to the tools demonstration. Mm. So I had my PowerPoint on the back, and then I had that um, presentation going. But it was, I mean, so I got into town anyway. I just wanted to show some bits in the room yeah. what it looked like. Um, but I'm going to grab a drink here real quick. <clears throat> so when that first day, that first afternoon, you were just settling in, acclimatizing, yeah, check it out the museum. Right. Right. So, right on. um, I, anyway, when, when, when I got to the next day, of course I, uh, I had to park in a different spot in the real parking garage and it was early, nothing was open, but the museum still is open. But of course I parked in the wrong spot. I was like, I need to just park in the right spot. It's a thousand degrees in Houston. I mean, it's like the hottest place on earth. You go outside and fry an egg on your forehead. It's so hot right now. And it's humid. Oh, it, it's just like miserable out there. And I'm wearing, you know, like a button up shirt. And, Trying to look uh, respectable. Yeah. A little respectable. Yeah. And I've, I'm lugging around Tupperware that I didn't take the night before <laughs> with like Super Nintendos in it. <laughs> there Just it is the, credibility. the picture. There the bit is the picture right there. It was like the one with the Super Nintendo in it yeah, for the right. tests, for the test patterns. Because I was using, you know, I was just bragging and using Artemio's uh, 240p test suite the whole time and showing all these people it so they would understand there was this alternate option for check-in CRTs. And they were really loving that kind of thing where they had never had the opportunity to see that, you know. But anyway, I have Tupperware's full of this stuff. I park, and I come out into the museum, and I'm like, ooh, I have no idea where I'm at. Like, this museum is huge. It's like the biggest footprint museum in Texas. So it's ginormous. Like, two buildings uh, across the street from each other. There's tunnels going in between. And so... <laughs> I go outside. And I'm like, I can tell from the front of the building where to go to get to that door where the lady helped me. Well, I got outside and I was like, oh, no, I have no idea like where this is. And so I'm looking around and I just start walking down the street that I feel would be the right way to go. And I, all of a sudden I look up, I'm two blocks away and I'm in like the ghetto. <laughs> There's like homeless people is like spray paint on this wall. And I call him, and he's like, where are you? And I'm like, oh, uh, man, I did the like worst thing imaginable and got <laughs> lost out here in Texas. And he's like, oh, wait, no, no, don't do that. And I was like, turned around, went back to where I started from, and then walked around the building a couple times, it felt like. Like three times, I felt like I walked around this building. And I finally got to the door where I was supposed to. So I showed up there, got checked in, and I was dripping sweat. And I was like, yeah. great, you know, because I just walked through this. And then I so... I check in and like four people right after that check in and they're all there for my class. Cool. And so it's, uh, it's one guy who's from Rice University and that's a school here in, or there in Texas in Houston. And so they have an art department and this guy works from there and they own CRTs too for the same purposes of art and they work with these museums locally. So there was a person from there. There's a person from the University of Houston. There were quite a number of staff from the museum itself that were attending this first day. Um, I want to say what about were the topics seven. on the first. What were the topics on the first day? So the plan for the first day was just the like hands-on hardcore demo. We're starting okay. 2030. We started jump right into it, like right into this this 2030 that you're seeing. That was the very first presentation. And then after that was the Dotronics, the um, other monitor, which is another box style monitor that we don't really use for gaming. And I'll, I'll be, and this is a good thing I got to look at this because it's an interesting aspect of this. It's not, it's not a good monitor for us for the most part, or for gaming. I mean, it's more of a museum piece. That's it's mm. intended for that. But anyway, that's what we started with was the twenty thirty class, the whole teardown. So it was hardcore. It wasn't like just presentations. That was all the next day. I had three just PowerPoint style presentations the second day. Uh, so there's there's these people that are local there. And then three people flew in from New York from MoMA, which is the Museum of Modern Art and like the biggest museum in the country for modern art. Yeah, it has the most legit. some of the most CRTs, yeah, in in, <laughs> in the country. Like they they were talking about having like hundreds to thousands of 2030s in Dotronics monitors. And uh, so that was the big thing. Like the guy who organized this over the last couple of years, he put out a release 
to the other museums, letting them know that I, he had organized this class. It was definitely happening. Anybody who wanted to come could come, and there was seating, and just to RSVP, right? Hmm. So he um, he got a response from MoMA, again, New York Modern Art Museum, and they said they were sending people down, and he was like, I haven't been able to get them to send anybody down <laughs> for three years. And then I mentioned yeah. I've got a CRT class with uh crt repair and they sent it they're sending three people (laughs) so it was awesome those guys showed up they were great uh i got a chance to meet them and they were really into it the presentation very much so but they were only there for the one day so that's why kirsten was like look this needs to be the big day and i was i was like great yeah let's do that first let's just bust right into these two monitors that they are using all the time and show Mm -hmm. them basically that i know everything about this 2030 that anybody probably does anymore uh so when you so, were giving these uh you went you said you launched straight into this technical explanation uh the presentation you, you're going hardcore talking about the technicals were could they follow along like obviously not all every well, single I had part to, but i had structured this so the the um you know, people know a bit about CRTs because they have to work on them and use them for art pieces. You know, like we had okay. talked about in the last episode, there are many mm. art pieces. You could probably always go in a big modern art museum and they'll have a couple CRTs doing something. Mm. Um, and I'll show you some stuff here later about what they were doing at this museum, like around. But uh, so they know CRTs and what they are. I had to build up by having probably 15 slides of explaining everything about the 2030 okay you know like from a marketing standpoint and then kind of like the special features and what it does how you use it Um, so that was a good 30 minutes build up right before i actually tear into it Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was it's meant to build up and then it's such a it was like i said it was a three-hour block course so yeah there's a lot going on but um I was concerned about it being too much over people's heads and stuff, but I the feedback mm-hmm. I got was like, no, this was per, like great, but I'm waiting mm-hmm. for some, you know, them to give me official feedback, uh, which they sure. are like, I was like, please, you know, please give me some feedback, everybody. Mm-hmm. And so they're really excited to do that. And that's great for me. So I uh, hope so. And I think they would be, it sounds like they know enough that they would understand that, okay, three hours, it's not a long period of time to cram a lot of technical info in that it's not so much like oh the presentation wasn't good it was just like gee there's a lot to a lot of knowledge to transfer in a relatively yeah. short period of time and and you know there are some terms that like i was using a lot of like cold solder joint and okay. things like yeah. that and so it and it, so um then i had to be like does everybody know what i realized i didn't say what a cold solder joint was so i had to stop mm. right and explain that in the middle of the presentation uh, and I and I realized I talked with Kirsten afterwards, and I was like, it would be. He's like, it would be best maybe to accompany this with like a one-page document of these terms, and kind of give nice. an explanation of what that means to accompany this, so that you have a you know these kind of industry terms or say that or like, if I say you want to test it, you can put, um, you know, could check continuity for a trace mm. and kind of explain, you know, trace what that means, continuity, what that means, just some overall terms to be helpful. Uh, so like, that's a cool thing to add to this, right? So anyway, that's a good you can idea. And like it what I was telling you, put that info into a handout and then give exactly. it to them. Exactly. You've got too much <laughs> info and yeah. that you, that's even something hey. you could again, give them beforehand. And so they right. roll up. That's you know, what they said. They like said, like, he said, yeah, get a PDF for me. Just email it. You don't even have to print Ooh. anything. And so, yeah, you would, you and I have been talking and you were telling me to do this, but it was so such a cram session. Actually, you saved my ass on the uh, history. No, seriously. I went back yeah. through and made that. And I'll talk about that because that was a second day. And that that presentation went really well. Uh, so... And uh, but in, that's you know this first day was all just in this classroom with this. Uh, the total number of people there was like thirteen, which I thought there would be like five. Uh, yeah, thirteen's great, man. Unbelievable, yeah. So in and out, some of them, but most of them were there for like the whole three hours for mm. the first one, and came back for the second afternoon session. So uh, that was that was very nice, very cool. Um, 
A lot of, a lot, like, I found out, too, that there were other people that said they were coming that weren't able to make it. And okay. uh, NASA, NASA was going to send. What? Yeah, they said NASA, Houston has a NASA bay or, you know, station, yeah. and they were going to send people because they use the CRTs, too. So he's, they're all going to get a copy of the class that's been oh. filmed in 4K and uh, edited. He's got to edit it together for like the next month, uh, chop it up, make it look nice. Sure, sure, but he's sure. like, uh, yeah, and then everybody in the museum world will get a notice to watch this. If they're interested, and they didn't make it. This to the is class. so good. This is now you just drop a line. You know, hey, can I just get connected to the guys at NASA? You just drop them a line. Hey, if there's any, I can help you somehow. Exactly. Is there something I can do to, you know, just let me know? And, <laughs> isn't that, uh, isn't geez, that incredible? Talk about doors <laughs> opening up. Jesus. Yes, and with all the museums now too. Hopefully, mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's really the next kind of steps is to try to um, just get meetings. Like I'd like to get meeting with somebody now from MoMA, even if I have to drive up to New York and. Yeah. Take them out to lunch or something. So, uh, that's so okay. So we did day one. Day so day one. one was just the three hours, just tearing down the twenty thirty and ripping through it. Day one was three hours of ripping down the twenty thirty, doing a lot of demos. I did. I demonstrated every adjustment you could make on it, and mm -hmm. also a lot of yoke adjustments. I took out some tools, showed them off. We cleaned some boards. I mean, it was it was a, it's a really thorough class, and it's like ninety slides to go with the all the tools you see on the table and the monitor which was live fed 240p test suite from the uh, super <laughs> nintendo <laughs> so that's really cool um it was it, it, so that all was the first one and then after that i moved on to the uh dotronics in the afternoon which i don't oh these are dotronics monitors i'll show you some of the ones that the museums had set up it's these uh they're just in a metal case, okay? And they're the ones that are mm. sold by the guy that Bob interviewed a couple years back, maybe, who right, right, right. he had a bunch of old stock of CRT parts and, and boards and tubes, and he would repurpose them in a custom metal frame like that and sell them to museums specifically. Mm. They're so all of these Dotronic ones are from this old new stock guy. It's not like old, old stock that they've had. Dotronics isn't something that's been around for like a really long time, or is it? Yeah, it's, it's been only around for a really long time. They used to make like stuff when it was still new. Like they used to right, make them, but okay. then they, you know, ran out of stock. So now he's about out of stock. And the guy from the museum who sent me up, he's like, look, we talked to him a lot. You should really talk to him. What he's really done is he's just got a. I, mean, I looked at these monitors. There's literally uh, consumer grade CRTs that have just mm. been put in a different style case. And okay. it's just a custom case. You just take it out and it's got a custom two piece bezel and, mm. or a custom one piece bezel that you unscrew in the front and then a single metal frame and then a back piece that you unscrew in the back. And the tube is mounted. And then the circuit boards are mounted in there, and it's literally any circuit board. So um, the component ones he told me were actually flat screen Trinitrons. So it's just like a component TV. Huh. So he's just pulling tubes, almost getting well, I old think stock, however he can. Yeah, I don't think he's doing. I don't think he's taking old stock. I think he's taking new stock of his. Oh, like new he got, stock, he sorry, got yeah, new fine. like a bunch of these new C TVs, um, maybe even without shells on them to begin with right yeah, way yeah, back yeah. and he's got a warehouse of those and so um or just tubes and yokes and then a whole deflection board that will work with it for example there's there's ways like we talked about this with um mm. with thomas right about the open source crt mm -hmm. how he could use different yokes depending on their induction you right, could use right. a yoke and a tube with any chassis oh. uh, so he did that and designed these so they're they're about out of those stock, but he's got this frame that's amazing that would be great to just throw any CRT that we don't have a shell for. If mm. uh, it's something I think would be a really cool idea, so I would like to talk to him about it, the tooling and how's it how it's done. But that was the monitor. So yeah, that's cool because that's a that's a concept that will last. Like eventually, his stock's going to run out. The doc trying right. to right? That that Bob talked to the, at one day. But there's still some things that can live on past that. If he's making these, as you say, if he's making these cases, then you know, repairers like you could be just inserting other tubes that you have, and then 
rebuilding or Thomas's, uh, you know, when, oh, when yes. Thomas gets Absolutely. the open source CRT, that's something that could be incorporated into that. So, okay, very interesting. And All then right. think about, like, you know, how people are. Think about the potential of putting, like, wraps on these things and making them really, oh, really yeah. cool, you know? You just put, like, wraps on it or whatever. Stickers, okay, be dope. your own cool tube. Uh, kind of like a DIY thing, but so I need to call Kurt and talk to him about this, uh, especially mm. like you said right now. I got so many chances of introductions from legitimate people right now to get um, at least a conversation. So yeah. those were those monitors. I really had to just go in with the class after doing that whole 2030 class. I was like, we're going from one that I'm an expert on and I have 90 slides to this one. I have nine slides. <laughs> and I'm like, we're really just going to take it apart. You're going to do it with me. I was like, I've never worked on one of these. I'm not going to lie to you. I might need your help with some stuff. And so that was the whole other class where I showed him how to like discharge the tubes right. And um, <clears throat> we did some servicing, like added the dielectric grease to the anode cap, talked about the anode cap more a lot with that one. There wasn't a lot of adjustments we could actually make with it. Um, but it was a good example of like the difference in build qualities for sure between the Sony and the, sure. Uh, Cause you're these. looking at a consumer set versus yeah. a professional set there. And then that finished up the second half. That's that class lasted about an hour and a half with another discussion at the end. I knew the guys were leaving. So mm -hmm. there was some things from the other presentations that I wanted to talk to them about. I did a presentation that was going to be the last one of the whole thing about analog resolutions and, and then like trying to get devices to help them uh, take old, uh, I mean, it's basically capturing old footage from things that are hmm. analog video machines and then digitizing them like we had kind of discussed before mm -hmm. and then uh, having that preserved in whatever format. So I had all these slides put together on these devices and I literally was sitting there pitching uh, Mike Cheese Retro Tink products to them because I had like four slides with everything about Retro Tink stuff all from their website and like referenced, you know, their, here's their website, here's the, all the great things about this, here's pictures of it. Uh, and they were just blown away because it was like, you know, his has like integrated C cam stuff and mm -hmm. PAL, which this whole presentation was about the differences in. Um, analog video resolutions and regions and stuff like that. And I was like, this is going to be so, and, and they were just loving that. So I was like, yeah, there's that. And then there's the, you know, the other retro tank. And I went through that and I was showing and they were just like, they were like, what CKM, you know, blown away. And so I was like, yeah. Uh, so, it, and that was just incredible to talk to them about how much, um, you know, then they were real curious about, the gaming scene, like what's carrying, what's intriguing to us and our side mm -hmm. and like how, uh, and I was like, there's a lot of crossover you got. And I tried, and I was explaining, you know, there's like people who are brilliant engineers and their side hobby is trying to make a product for this, uh, gaming niche thing. And this, you you know, in analog video, you're not even, cons thankfully you don't even have to be concerned with lag 90% mm -hmm. of the time on a video project where it's just video. The lag doesn't, latency isn't a problem, but mm. uh, you know, that's the whole presentation was about how com video signals differentiate and then adding okay. artifacts, you know, and I just want to show yeah, that was like the last thing it was a long discussion about Mike Okay, because I mean, it is still going to be relevant to them. They've got a presentation, whether it's coming on VHS, on DVD yeah. or some other format, and they got to work out what's the best way to display it, preserve it, and so forth. And deal with the region's uh, output. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, because okay. it's like, here's a piece that was made, a video piece that was made in 1978, and it came from somewhere outside of the United States in a different complete yeah. region. And all you're getting is... Mm. <clears throat> some horribly done a a DVD copy of some digitization that was done in like Brazil in, in like 2004. And he says, they always show artifacts. It does all these mm -hmm. crazy patterns on the wall. And then he's like, if you're lucky enough, you can somehow get a original master copy of this. Right. And it'll be on a VHS tape or some type of analog video. And that's how you can, then you could take something like Mike cheese device and do so much with it to try to perfect this 480p upload. And then I was like, of course, you know, here's the other ways to get it back out to analog video yeah, sure. down to a usable thing for either a 480p monitor or down to 240 or 480i. 
right. It's amazing how relevant this is. These exact issues that we deal with, PAL, NTSC, uh, 480i, 480p, these are the exact things that the, these museum people are, are interested in as well. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I mean, it was so much fun uh, because thankfully, you know, sitting here nerding out over this stuff over the last six years, it's like really paid off. Like somehow I got lucky <laughs> enough to have like people wanting to know this stuff. So this was an example of how mm, how they'd get a video it? set up in one of these monitors. This is a playback of an obviously an older analog video, okay? And it's got mm -hmm. the two monitors situated like this, and then there's the black box down here that it's set on. That's where all the mm -hmm. electronics are snugly hide in, you know, hidden oh, yeah. into. So you can see here he's got S video and then um, left and right audio, which these did have really great speakers in them. I'll admit that. That was great. Okay. Their With sound. Electronics. All right. S and then video. they're using okay, these cool. bright sign playbacks, and these do HDMI controlled playbacks through, like you could control them elsewhere through Ethernet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. you've got that going to HDMI and then HDMI out to this box over here, mm -hmm. which is hard to see, but it's a HDMI mm -hmm. to S video professional all tell uh, video um, converter. So it oh, automatically okay. down. Right. Right. Yeah. And so that was part of my presentation was that one. It's like 150 bucks. I was actually curious. I might buy one just to see how it works. That's not too bad if it actually no, yeah. works and it does a... Pr and did you, in your experience, did it do a... Like if the, the, the source, I guess, was four by three, even though it was... Uh, even though yeah, it was you HDMI? can tell the source. They were He was able to keep the source still perfect. Um, okay. All right. And so it was able to play it there. back. So that was cool. Like they were able to take that. And these, these have a lot of like built-in settings to some of them. Look at all this things plugged in back there, though. Hmm. Look at that one. What was the name setup. of that? What was the name of that device? The Altel? Altel? Yeah, it's an Altel. Uh, I can send Altel. you it because it's in my presentation. So I've got okay, a lot cool. of data on it. I can. T I just don't remember off the top of my head. It's actually not mm. in this file. Um, so that was how they did that uh, set up there. Let's see some other stuff. So here's some CRT. Uh, in that room that we worked in, here's some of the CRTs. I'll just breeze Amazing. through these so we can get a little bit of a break on that and i'll talk about day two a little bit sure uh, sure so this is so their back are, room is it this is like a no work this room so this is around the side of the room i was presenting in oh okay cool so they had he had wheeled and brought these huge crts in to look at christ so he had these two and i've got this is the one i did a video on they're 40 inch mitsubishi <laughs> crts and the guy um the guy had he had gotten them from somebody who had a audio had like a promotional company in L.A. Mm. And the guy did promotions with these televisions where he you see how he's got it on wheels. Mm -hmm. It's it, he had made custom travel cases for him that would fit over this. He'd wheel these two CRTs in and then you see this curtain thing and this pallet. Well, it was mm -hmm. custom molded to fit the base of this TV about an inch or two inside it. And then it's all oh. solid wood. And it had forklifts that you could stick a fork truck <laughs> in there. And then you'd lift this up and then you'd put the box together on wheels. And then you'd set this down on top of the box. Which, let's see if I got a picture of that box. I have to have some somewhere. There's the box, the background. Come on. I, did I really not get one? Hey. Uh, uh, no, I don't think. Goodness gracious. Okay. So. Anyway, the the box, it would go on top of the box and then you have curtain around the box and then just play like crazy videos in in the early 2000s, late 90s at parties. Okay, sure. So he had those were at like the Firefly premiere or something. That was the claim to fame on these things. But Dope. they were massive. And yeah, uh, like oh. yeah. And so I got to okay, work Okay, so on he's those. got them. Has he used them for anything yet, or he just sort of no, obtained them? No, he says like the museum hates them because they're just so they don't. Nobody really wants anything that big. But I met a guy. So he's like, like us. He's a hoarder like us. Yeah, right? but he's, yeah. He's and a cultural he's got, hoarder. But, oh, but look, I'm got, doing it for art. But he's got uh, commercially or or uh, like the most lockdown security on his stuff with climate <laughs> control on everything. So he's, I was like, you have the best. I was like, you have the perfect environment to save anything. <laughs> that's like electronic. That's so awesome. Cause we were, he showed me around the whole place. Like I, I swear Lewis, I was laughing with him. I was like, you know what happened to me when I walked in here? If you let, if I turned around and you were gone, I would, I would be lost <laughs> in this museum 
for the rest of my life. You uh, find me just starved to death in but- a corner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so those were the two. I did some videos on them. This over here was an, a late uh, 70s Trinitron like CVM. So it did different. Uh, it was just like a TV style monitor. Okay. Uh, there's the big one. There's another oh, one. All tremendous. these worked too, which was crazy. Mm. Yeah, I like how this guy is like he's just a passionate collector like us. Right. He right. loves the museum exhibitions. He I he's got say. an eye for these things. He's got a little budget along the way, and uh, mm-hmm. even if he doesn't have, he's like you and I. If he, he he'll see a great set and just think like, yeah, I'll take it. I'll I'll just put it away for later. Just yeah, to, yeah, absolutely. I like it. So this one is the oldest one, and it was oh, worked, CVM, worked perfectly. Yeah. It's well, this one no, this one actually was a PVM. The other one was oh, a yeah, CVM yeah. on the ground. It was from like eighty four or something, but this one was from eighty one. Mm-hmm. So this was the oldest, and it, it looked great for composite video. Uh, that's mm-hmm. all it really had. But this Real was a nice. Mitsubishi one that they had. It was very similar to the one I restored a few years ago. Uh, only this one had a metal shell instead of a wood shell. It worked fine. Um, this one, he, we, we, <laughs> this is the Sony widescreen and man, uh, this thing was a turd. The KV 34 HS 510. Sorry. Sorry. Flat screen fanboys. This thing was a piece of junk. It actually, uh, we even put in just S video and it would show the <laughs> image and, um, it would upscale it to like 480i, you know? Uh, so it would do the okay. same thing yeah, a digital yeah. TV did. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing as like using the flat screen, only it's huge. It's so that's huge the sort CRT. of thing that if you if you had a 720p source or something or a 1080i source, then maybe it might look. Yeah, I don't know. I think it would still add latency too, uh, okay? Because yeah, it's yeah. doing a conversion I've, there. Well, it depends. So I've, I've I've just read that whatever the there's the, one or two can, that Shank said did didn't. Yeah, if you can find the native resolution of those, if such a thing if you can find that native resolution then it could be quite good but for everything else right that's a very and that's a very small use case for a very big tv yeah so it's you know it's different this was this was their back storeroom they had a bunch of racks of just awesome oh, monitors in cool. there there's all the jvcs there's all the 14 l5s tons of small nice. monitors over here i couldn't really get fit a lot of pictures in there let's see if there's anything else cool from this part so these were they had some stu- other stuff set up throughout the museum like 2030s. Mm-hmm. This was uh for an MC Esker uh Esker piece uh which was like I don't know anything about art and it was like so bu- so they were really like I was like I'm not trying to be like an a- an ass. This is like consider me like a naive kid that knows nothing about some of this stuff cuz this guy is like a hugely famous artist. A lot of people yeah. would know es- MC Esker. So they had like a video talking about him. Like a lot of these, like, so they would do videos, you know, they have an artist and there's some video documentary done on this artist when they were alive from the seventies, eighties. So they want to play that back with the art piece, right? With the whole exhibit. Like they had 200 Mm -hmm. pieces of art from a collection for this guy's thing. And this was their big piece. Like you had to get second tickets for it. Extra, (laughs) extra tickets to go to it. And, um, so at the beginning, he had this PVM set up with a video showing how this guy's art process and this documentary was like a 45 minute video and you could sit there and watch it on that. And that's just another way they would set those up and use them as opposed to trying to play this video back on a uh, modern screen. Right. Oh, OK. So, uh, OK. So that because this is what, what we're seeing here is this is not even a direct piece of art from that artist. This is the documentary that goes along with it. But it was created back in the day. It was also created on that same media. And is was it just easier for them to keep using a CRT? Is that it rather than no, these digitization it's not easier. Stuff- it's because they don't really care about I mean, easier might come into play. But this is usually a design from like the curator's perspective what do they want and mm. do they want to use this stuff do they re- i mean it's like this is probably the way this exhibits looked and it's natural form for a long time they like using this mm. hardware when it's acceptable mm. and just like us that would be like 
That would be like us if you were asking us today okay. if we had the best CRT and then the best flat screen available side by side and you were going to set it up to show it off. Let's say you're going to set it up to show off like M Super Mario Bros. You know, you're going to pick the, the connoisseur in you is going to and the artist and everything. You're going to want the CRT, right? I mean, sure, sure, to, sure. also, it's just, you know. So that's that makes sense. Okay, that's kind of what they're doing. But I can't speak to everybody's intent. He said everybody's different, you know. And these okay. these are done by curators and their design. And that's interesting sneak... because just like they, look, I, I and and that question that you just posed, Steve, about would you want the top CRT or the top, you know, if you then factor in on the other side of that fence, factor in Mister with some amazing CRT filters over the top that are looking unbelievable these days put that on some top end i don't know high oled screen there's a whole bunch of people that'd be like dang i like that thing too exactly and that looks great so, so there's another curator who might take it in a different direction and there's not and there's obviously not wrong right so that's not mm -hmm. wrong for them to do that that's right right their that's their vision of what can be done with modern technology and more mm -hmm. modern stuff <clears throat> of the playback so that's kind of um that's kind of one of the things that i was kind of given like a warning about is you know you can't like speak hard lines on things like that because then you can just obviously upset somebody right okay you know it's I mean, just like, like gaming, a curator man. heard just that like like yeah. just like any you discord wanna... you've ever been on all right right and it's <laughs> and then and then you're stepping on people who are real toes you're stepping on who like study something from an academic standpoint, study something and research it for like 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, this guy's just a BSer. And so that's what, you know, you got to be careful. So, okay. It's, and I, and like I said, so the last, that's, that's the last of the, those kind of things I'd probably show you. Here's something that the museum actually let me take home. I showed you this. Snuck wah, some wah, we this. Wah. We're not going to talk too much on this. We get stuck on it forever. Uh, but I'll tell you more as this goes. But this is a working 1985 triple gun CRT projector with a bunch of cool in analog inputs. And uh, we got composite video to work in it. I didn't even mm -hmm. try the other stuff because when the third day after. So the second day I did a bunch of presentations in a large, a much bigger place. I'll show you a picture of that in a second. And then the third day, it was more of a just repair day. So I fixed two 2030s that he had that were broken and okay. uh, like was able to get them working and perfect. G great. It was awesome. So that that worked out well. And the whole time he was trying to get this, if you can see this, uh, L this projector working. And mm -hmm. he's like, this has been in our basement. We bought it new in 85. <laughs> 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 it used to be the main projector for one of the rooms down there it hey the light on it only goes up to a maximum of 100 lumens so that's like one one hundredth of a modern uh mm. display it was awesome you could literally lewis you could go up and you could turn this thing on full brightness and you could stare into this tube <laughs> and it would just be one solid color of a high resolution picture of whatever you're playing and it uh -huh. wouldn't burn your eyes at all it's so like dim you could just stare yeah. into it. It was. I was like, "This is unreal." And has it and always you, been like that? That's not an age thing. That's just no. That, it's, it's well, so old. and then they like, probably that's how would dim. Was. They don't last a long time. They only last mm. a few thousand hours if you're lucky. So we'll right, see. Right, they'll be on all the time in the museum. A few thousand hours gets knocked well, over pretty no, see, easy. They would cut them off. He said, but yeah, it. Uh, that's what I was surprised. They all okay, worked, yeah, yeah. and we all we got to see all the colors and stuff. Here's a bunch cool. of stuff. It had. It, this has so many adjustments in it. It had like 85 potentiometers inside of it <laughs> on a board. So that'll be something that will be coming because uh, I'm going to try to get it set up. That The museum gave me this and said, yeah, study it and tell us what you find out for the next six months. So I thought, I mean, you could tell right. things went pretty good if, they were, if the, we were leaving with that kind of a... Yeah, I mean, that's a great video. I look forward to your analysis and your video on that one. That's a, such a oh, unique... Oh, I'm going to have a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'm going to try to restore it and figure it out and... It works, oh, so that's a great um, point to start from. So that was the first mm. couple of days. Before we get before we yeah, get on go to the next day, I have a question um, about the museum's use of monitors. That um, you, it keeps coming up that a lot of the museums have a lot of twenty thirties PVM twenty thirties, 
And it just, like you said, that was what you made your thing on. You talked about the New York guys. I got a bunch. Everyone's got a bunch. Why was it exactly that model of PVM? One simple reason. And it's the same reason the Dotronics have been used by them so much. It's the fact that they're, squ they're cube and they're stackable for video mm. walls. That's okay. exactly what Sony did in the original design that made it perfect for this. I don't even know if it was intended or unintended, but it was obviously part of the plan for something because they had it in, and that was part of my presentation was the marketing material directly from Sony. And if you go find that, you'll find that um, one of their marketing ploys was this video wall ability, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I explained how this was, you know, that was one of the main features for this and how even before I tore it apart, how the inputs go in and out from one another and connect mm -hmm. and loop, and it was all designed for this. So Sony was the one who came up with that design originally, mm -hmm. and that one and the 2530 are the ones that the museums have the most of. They actually told me they have more of the 2530s at New York. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, look, that's completely different from this one. You guys need to get have me come in for that one because it's, I was like, there's an Achilles heel on that one. It can like die from this certain thing, so I was like, it needs to. There's need to be serviced, and they were like, "Oh, really?" So I'm like, yeah, please, <laughs> you know, let me come up there and help you. And so awesome. Okay, so not so that's that why many they of the, the PVMs were exact cubes, or just that, or uh, I mean, a, a few were. I mean, I know my 14 inch PVM was a cube that was stackable, but they were particularly. They've got the like smaller bezels, and they kind of work yeah. a bit better when they're stacked. Well, for anything that they want to do a video wall for that mm. stacks, then they'll want to use the stackable CRTs because it's easier and it looks better. And you can use that. You can use, they've got these incredible matrix switchers that are unbelievable, you know, that make a video wall do all kinds of different things in different quadrants. Yeah. Okay. And cool, it's cool. so controllable. It's unreal. So that's why they're able to, and in, and, and, um, when that stuff was all new, the people who were pushing the envelope were doing that on CRT. So this is their like art. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the Namjoon Pikes pieces we talked about in their last episode. Those um, vi massive video walls he made and how they had different things going on simultaneously. It was all from these a crazy. He's just a master of using a matrix switcher, too, on top of everything cool. else. Cool. Yeah. Oh man, this is so that was so yeah. interesting. And we, we so we've we've gone through the day one presentation. You went straight into technicals to help the New York guys to do that. Then you had a bit of downtime where you could go mm -hmm. through their stuff and, and see that. Um, and so then we're moving on to what do we got? A day two now. Yeah. So during day one, you know, um, we also had a breakfast meeting to meet everybody, and then we had lunch meeting together, which was nice in town, and then. Uh, the day one ended and I was like, man, I'm, you know, after all this, I was like, I'm, I'm toast. And, and I was talking to Kirsten. He's like, yeah, go ahead, go get some rest. It was like five or six. And mm. he, uh, he was, when I talked to him coming into town, he's like, I'm going to AEW wrestling, you know, dynamite is in Houston this week. I won't be able to go out Wednesday night. Cause I'm going to be busy doing that. And I was like, well, uh, so I talked to him Tuesday and I was like, after all this stuff, I was like, Hey, so, you know, uh, I want to go to that dynamite <laughs> show. I was like, you know, cause I had this big conversation too. It was like with my family and my, of course, you know, my dad and my father-in-law, they're just like, Oh, let me give you some advice. When you go on this big business trip, you know, it's got a deal. <laughs> so I'm like, they're like, you know, just be just like be extra friendly. And so, I mean, I was, I was just trying to be as nice and like as, mm. you know, try to be as as ex outgoing without being an ass as sure. I can be. So I was like, of course, I want to go to this. I haven't been to wrestling in years, but I loved, I loved the idea. So I went and bought tickets. I, he's like, I got another guy in town. And you wouldn't believe this. I can't even tell you. This is unbelievable. This is an unbelievable part of this story, Lewis. The guy, there's a guy in town who owns a video game shop, like a retro okay. game shop. <laughs> He's a good friend of mine. He wants to come tonight too. So you guys can get a couple tickets together. You sit cool. there and then eventually we'll be able to meet up um, somewhere down on the floor. We're in like semi the same section kind of area. So 
I go and I meet this guy from this this guy from this game store in Houston. And so I'm like, love talking to this. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. You know, I want to talk to this game store guy about game store stuff, running a game store, doing this. So I start talking to him and we're talking about Neo Geo. And I found out he's like from Miami, Florida. And then I'm I'm talking to him about my Neo Geo cabinet. And then I told him, I'm like, I got my Neo Geo cabinet from this dude in Murfreesboro. And I told him his name. He's like, oh, my God, this guy from Miami grew up in Miami with this guy that I bought my Neo Geo cab from. And they were they were like these arcade prodigies at Mortal Kombat 2. Like no one could beat them back in the day at Mortal Kombat 2. They would win tournaments. And so mm-hmm. this guy, he's he knows like all the fight game scene guys. It's like <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy crap, you he's like, Yeah, me and this other guy were like best friends with him all growing up. And I was like, every time I bring up this guy's name, somebody knows him because he was just <laughs> early gaming prodigy or something. So uh, but that was went to that show. I've got actually some pictures I'm gonna show you from the show. It was yeah, so it's dope. Awesome. show me the wrestling man. So I couldn't believe it, right? This AEW, they started at 6 p.m. and it's mm-hmm. it was three different shows that night. So there's an hour long taped show that's not live. So this one is not one they're going at a huge fast pace at. So they probably take an hour twenty minutes to do this first show, and then after that there's a live show from seven to nine I think um, on TNT. So that one's actually paced and got commercial breaks, you know, and they tell you when they're coming back live. And then there's another one after that that's a final taped hour-long show. So that one goes long, too. So I was, like, at this show, and uh, I, I, I was blown away how just, like, the great production quality. You could see the set here. It was mm. full. This was the first hour. This is where our first seats were. So these were, like, last-minute seats for 30 bucks. You could see they're not bad for this kind of right. place. You get a good view, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, anyway, just some match stuff here right. from the first couple matches, but all of a sudden the place cleared out after the first three hours were done. Right. And the last okay. show is starting to be taped and we were like, Oh crap, let's go down front. Uh, yeah. and we got all the way to the second row right behind the guardrail. And I was like, I'm not sitting in the guardrail because there were literally wrestlers getting thrown into the guardrail <laughs> and it would get, it's metal. It's like bike racks behind these wrappings you see on the screen right here it would get thrown into the thrown into the people's <laughs> chests and their knees and the people would be like ow, ow, my knee!" you know and i was like all right we'll see second row because it was wide open for all of us um so these are some pictures from that second row again for this taping and so uh that was just an absolute blast when we actually got to go down there i wish i'd probably taken more shots but look how close we were just like right in nice. there nice um these guys are like they're bigger this dude over here this was the main event for their show it's so funny i knew all these guys from when they were wwe stars so i want to call them their wwe names but (laughs) oh they get new names when they shift yeah they get new names they move over so like and it's so ridiculous because this guy his name his name in wwe was daniel bryan and now his name's brian danielson so it's like (laughs) (laughs) it's like give me a break kind of classic like so i would just be like what the heck have ever happened with this guy and then all of a sudden he would walk out you know somebody who just like whatever happened to this star from the 2000s and then they'd be coming out to wrestle so this was the main event um yeah see i don't even know what these guys names are in this show because like this was dean ambrose mm-hmm. when he was in wrestling it's like wwe stars was so we we had a blast there at that end. Uh, it was pretty funny. A lot of cool stuff That's happened. So cool. I didn't get enough pictures, but I was just trying to laugh and have fun. Um, um, we, I would say to you that I also got to go to a wrestling match in Tallinn as well. So yeah. wrestling, look, very well established in uh, American culture, understood. Everyone knows what the wrestling is. But wrestling's a totally new thing in Estonia. Uh, really? Never really had it before. There's probably This is probably, I understood, the third time something's being held and people just don't know about it. Uh, they don't know about it the way that we're, even when we were growing up, we knew about it. So it was cool that they were trying to put on a professional event. Uh, there was probably generously, probably 80 people there. Um, yeah. But that's what you got to do. Like that's how it yeah. begins. Um, and you still need the full production. It's wrestling. So you need the lights and you need some cameras and you need, it's still a kind of expensive thing to put on. It's a small enough place. 
Um, and it was a lot of parallels to me with the way that we started stand-up comedy in Estonia 10 years ago that, you know, nobody knew the culture or they just heard about some, you know, they heard about it even before the internet back then. And then we were kind of doing it live for the first time. And it was very similar to that idea. I guess the, the difference is, is that when you're doing stand-up comedy, I mean, we could start by standing on a coffee table in a cafe, right? For 20 people, 30 people, 50 people. That's fine. We didn't pay a lot of money to make it happen. But wrestling needs a size, right? Needs a certain... It needs some lights. It needs an event. These lights? Somebody's got to put that whole ring together and take it <sighs> apart, right? It's a and lot of money set for someone to do that. Up. It's a promotion. It's really like... The guys, so I'll tell you the truth. In Nashville, there was an awesome scene of underground, kind of right below the professional edge wrestling, like the mm. very last of these territory wrestlings when wrestling was great uh, in America. And they have fairgrounds, and and they were you could go there and you would have the best time because like the maximum amount of people there was probably two hundred that could fit. That's great. Yeah, and okay. so that's a perfect size. You're so close. Mm. Everybody's jacked to put on a huge show because it doesn't matter. The energy of the building is still carrying everybody. And you know, it's like there's legends that have fought in this building. So it's got to start somewhere. I'm I'm just glad to hear 80 people showed up. That's pretty darn awesome. Those those small shows, though, they're outside of this AEW show I just went to. Mm. The best shows I've ever been to were smaller at that uh, by far. And I've been to tons of big wrestling events. Sure. They were by far better at that fairgrounds event. The 80 what was fine. You and you could see the people that were there were like enthusiastic, right? There's some guys in the front row yelling and then the rest was there. You shut up. You shut up. And, you know, <laughs> get into that. Your pants are tighter. Your, your IQ is tighter than your pants. You fuck. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, you shut up. And uh, so the people were into it. And you could imagine, like, it's just a growing a culture thing. Like, 80 was fine. You get a few more and it would be pumping, like, really going off. And we took uh, my little five-year-old cousin along as well because he, um, he, his grandfather was an Estonian boxer back in the day, you know, a very long time ago. So he, as a five-year-old, got really fascinated by these stories about his grandfather, the boxer. And so when he heard, oh, there's a fight on, we can go and watch this match. <laughs> he was really into it. And he watched the whole thing. He came with us. He drank his Coke or, you know, his water. He had his sippy bottle and uh, he watched the whole thing. There was one Estonian wrestler in the final and he was cheering for him. And then he got a photo with him afterwards. I and, saw that. Uh, it was so cool to that we could enjoy it. I went with my friend. He's an old school wrestling fan as well. And that also we could get you know, the kid into it as well. And my friend who's an old fan of wrestling, he didn't bring his two boys. He wasn't sure whether it would work. And he was like, dang, I should have brought my boys. I should have brought my boys. So <laughs> wrestling is, it's for the kids as well as the adults. I'm real, Absolutely. real big on that. I think that, see, uh, that's that's just how it starts. And it might take off there. Who knows? People might really enjoy oh, yeah. it. It's, it's a lot of fun. It is super fun. The best thing about going to those shows too is like, it's not, you don't have to be involved in this long storyline. It's very yeah. easy for them to come out and show you who, like, the babyface good guy is. That's what they call him, babyface. And then the heel is the bad guy. So it's like the obvious, like, boo fest for this grease ball. You know, yeah. it's really well done in an old school yeah. way. So there's not a lot of storyline build up. And then it's just, it's it's like guys that are getting paid peanuts to go out there mm. and break their neck and put on a show for you in hopes of, I don't know, one day getting it big time you know right just you like, gotta do it yeah for sure they're not making any money especially the talent one you just 80 tickets whatever we paid for the ticket does not pay for everything but that's i guess they're factoring it in right like yeah we could we could bootstrap stand up because it's easy to put up two speakers and a microphone it doesn't cost you no money right but it's uh same. With, it's not the same with the wrestling okay you got to bootstrap a few times to get it rolling oh <sighs> well that's yeah that's a great that's... experience i'm glad that you got to take your nephew. That is so awesome. He'll probably never forget that and love oh, wrestling forever it. now. So that's uh, really cool. Um, one other thing about the AEW thing. I oh, was yeah, blown yeah. away. So my... F All right. Are you, you familiar with the 1980s song? Maybe. Yeah. Tarzan Boy? Goes, no. Tarzan oh, 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 oh. Boy. I don't know. I mean, I get the anyway, idea, but... Sure, it's a okay. goofy old song. So this song <laughs> kicks on, and this guy comes out named Tarzan Boy, and he's like 150 <laughs> pounds. And he's riding on this guy named uh, Lizard Saurus, his back. <laughs> and the crowd's going freaking nuts. It's green and white, and they're playing this awesome like old-school song. 
And uh, I'm like, who the heck is this guy? And the dude's like, oh, man, that's Luke Perry's son. So Luke oh, Perry, shit. the actor from 90210, his kid has been training since he was like 13 in wrestling. <laughs> and now he's like this big pop star, you know, big popping wrestling star. Mm. And I was like, this is awesome. I, was, I love every second of this. And I was just, <laughs> a jo- I, it was so incredible. And then they were like, yeah, and the guy who's carrying him, he was actually on one of those Big Brother shows, like the the, the <laughs> whatever, like reality, reality show. show. Yeah. And this guy's really? ja- gigantic, jacked, and they put him in this lizard, lizard saurus uh, s- mask, so he can't be recognized from his days in the, in the uh, reality TV show. So I mean, I was just and there's all these guys that are on the show now that are like kids of the guys I watched growing mm. up in america so it's mm-hmm. just so awesome because you're like that guy looks just like and they're like yeah that's that's his son and so Dope. there's a lot of that going on I, it really i was like i was blown away i went to the show this guy we went went four and a half hours we literally got there at six we yeah. left at 10 40 when the last match ended and everything cleared out nice i was like thank you thank you for helping me fall back in love with <laughs> <laughs> professional wrestling this was literally the best i can't i was like up till now, I could I can't even think of anything to compare to this because it was just such a it, f- four plus hours of not like you could never ask for that much. It's like a dollar a match I had to pay. Right. It's great. So man. Houston, Texas brought it back home. It's the hot. Oh line. yeah, the, it the arena was popping. It wasn't a huge place. It was a place where the uh, it was in the middle of campus, two two, which was awesome. University of Houston. Uh, okay. So it was right in the middle of campus. We walked through campus to get to it. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was the big fun night. So we were out late that night don't and, do uh, so yeah, that's, that was that this, I have yeah, one picture. So let's go back. So we got the, what do you got more? <laughs> yeah. We got some, what's the most, stuff just got, so there, there was the next, next day. day of presentations and, mm-hmm. um, this was actually the day we went to wrestling was the day of these presentations. Cause okay. after this was when we went to wrestling, we left straight mm-hmm. from this this was a larger auditorium. I this only picture I got of it, I can't believe, but I had to go down to this podium down here, way, way down here, <laughs> and like hundreds of seats in here, like a theater. And there was only, you know, the guys from MoMA had to leave. Yeah. Some of the people who locally came couldn't come that day. Um, but uh, the they were like, let's set it up in this room so we can get a good video recording of it and have oh, it look okay, that's like why. from okay. this perspective. You'll be able to use the large mm-hmm. screen better sound system it's podium since i didn't have any like there's two presentations i did where i didn't need to do anything besides Mm -hmm. stand there and give the presentation so this one was the history presentation it was birthed out of the one that was on my uh that's been on my channel forever where Mm -hmm. it's like the first 20 slides were about history but i expanded that history out into 90 slides or 99 slides i can't remember which one the other slides (laughs) and and it was full of just you know, so much text on the every slide, and then I was reading from for all these facts and things because I'm starting with how this whole started from a glass tube, uh, mm. all the way back in 18 like 57. So okay. we're starting that far back, and I'm talking about a, a dozen scientists who are in the late 19th century working on glass tubes to try to figure out what cathode rays are, what in what's their consistency. They're studying like. Um, subatomic particles trying to figure this stuff out on the cutting edge of this so there's all this kinds of information i've got on him and then i was like looking and i was talking to you and i would like before i left i was like this thing is terrible it's like it's got it's a hugely awesome presentation with thousands of things written on it and then you're like i just you know take and summarize it much better and put it down in the notes so that's all i did i just cut everything out and put like three bullet points of three to five words on each bullet point. And then I just had to read the stuff from my screen for the most part, yeah. look up every once in a while. You got the presenter view, they're ready to go, yeah. So that's what I did, um, but it was but right before that presentation starts, I this sweet, nice lady comes up to me and she's like, are you Steven? And I was having a conversation with one of the other people who had come to the classes. And I was like, yes. And she was actually the guy who had hired me to come there and, and set it all mm. up. She was like, two bosses above him so like the highest that i'd met there Mm. and she was just so nice she was like 
I want to thank you. I've had heard such great things about the way the class went yesterday. And I was like, well, thank you. You know, thank you so much for inviting me here. And this is a wonderful facility. Uh, she's like, thank you for coming. I was like, no, I really want to thank you for actually giving me this opportunity to even mm-hmm. show up and be able to do this for you. Um, I was, I was, I said, this is a completely new curriculum I wrote specifically for your museum and for the stuff that Kirsten and I had worked out. And so I kind of said that to her. I was like, um, I thank the, thank you for giving me some feedback. Cause my concern was that a lot of this was just going to be way too fast and furious and kind of over everybody's head. It was so technically, uh, delved into. And at the meantime, the guy who was in my class was that I was in the conversation with when she walked up is just standing there listening. And, uh, he was from rice. And so she was listening and I was talking about her. She's like, I don't know. I don't think that that's so I didn't hear anything like that. So I was, and I was like, well, that's great. And I talked to her just a little bit more, you know, uh, really nice. And she said, I've got time, you know, to sit in for probably 20 minutes of your presentation here on the history presentation. And then I've got a bunch of meetings, so I'm going to have to leave, but I want to see, you know, the first bit. I was like, well, thank you so much for sitting in. That's really wonderful. I appreciate it. And doggone it, Lewis, that uh, that presentation went one one hour and a half of me giving the presentation straight. And I was about to die. I didn't even grab a glass of water. <laughs> so I was like trying not to get tongue tied. And yeah. she stayed the entire thing. Wow. Like, That's the great, entire man. hour and a half. And then when I got to questions, she had to get up and go. And sure. so I was like, I can't believe it. She actually I was like, that must have been that must have been She's great. Th- that's nice. I'm so happy for you. And I'm going to put you on my CV. Recommendations for presentation consulting by Louis Ezeran. Yes. I, a few <laughs> swift texts to Steve. Steve, don't don't put all the words on the slide for the love of God. And just a yeah. little bit of advice. And it went so far into changing the presentation. That's, uh, I think, the perfect example of it. Like, it's not rocket science. Uh, you know, it's not like all these advanced techniques to create a great presentation. You did the basics and you were nailing it. I love it. Yeah, it went, it went awesome. I can't like that. Yeah, that went perfectly. That advice, it worked out great. Nice. I, I wanted, uh, yeah, you get, that's the thing. Even if you're like good at a lot of things, you, you don't have the time and room to see everything. Um, and it could be very simple. Like I was talking to my dad yesterday at breakfast, uh, telling him about the trip. And I was like, I did, I know every aspect of this trip. I think I did like the best possible I could like, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm not, everybody who watches us knows me. I'm not a, a bullshitter. I've never <laughs> been one and I never, I'm not like that. So mm-hmm. I'm genuine. And when I mean that, I mean, I'm genuine in everything. I'm not, I'm not like a kiss at, you know, I know how, but I know sure. how to talk to people and, you know, uh, be genuine, genuine because that's what I feel like. I don't, I don't like, you know, I, somebody said a long time ago, um, if you have something nice come up in your head and you know, you're with somebody, it's okay to say that to them. Like, you know, this looks mm. really nice. There's no reason like say something. It's always good to say something positive. It, what's, what's the difference? So I was like, that's I tried exactly to hit- what I thought from our first, that first podcast we ever did before the cathode raid tube, the one that we just did with the Zed cast. My takeaway was, dang, this guy talks a lot, but wow, he's really genuine. Like really, <laughs> like I believe, like I believe that he's being real with me. I believe his stories. I believe all the things about him. I, I got it from the first time we talked. Yeah. And I do talk a lot too much. <laughs> Probably on this one, it's like all me. It's like, so yeah, we're going to take a break from me talking. No, it's great, man. It's great. It's great. (laughs) So yeah, I believe you. And it sounds like you did. And I would say from, you know, behind the scenes, from what you told me and the the, the discussions back and forth that we have and we, you know, you bounced ideas and you told me what you're doing. And I saw all of the work that you were doing. And I was sitting back going, thinking to myself, Steve's doing too much work. I know it. I know (laughs) Steve's doing too much work, but... I didn't like need to comment on that because I'm like, yeah, do too much work. Over prepare. Right. This is the first one. This is a big shot. This is something very special to you. Yeah, do extra work more than is ever going to be needed because 
first of all, that gets your mind in the right zone. And I understood that's what it was doing for you. And secondly, even if you don't use the 90,000 friggin' slides that you've made for everything, it seems, you'll use them some other time. The work that you've done, even if you didn't say that content while on this trip, you will use it at some other instance. So uh, I, I would definitely say you did the hard yards and I'm really happy that uh, it, it turned out to be a great result. It certainly sounds like it. It's so interesting to, well, to hear thanks. this story. And I, yeah, thank you for the help. And look, this is, like you say, for even uh, anything, this could be the one, you know, at the end of the day, this could be the one and only chance in my life to ever do this, right? Who knows? What, you never know what's going to happen. Could be, could be. And that's sure. what I thought. I was like, this is my one opportunity moment that I have guaranteed because I knew that there would I'm, and that's my big hope is that there's more opportunities that blossom out of this to do more of this kind of consulting on top of the normal everyday CRT repair that I still love to do here while I'm not doing that. I would love to have a few trips a year scheduled to do this because I feel like it's extremely important and it's great to get another side of all this storyline and, and the CRT lifespan and everything and just learn more about preservation. Absolutely. It's, so I'm, 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 I was like, this is the one shot and I want to give it every bit of effort. And then I like, that's the thing is I was driving those 30 hours there and I was like, man, I wish I'd have had one more week to just go through <laughs> these and make them even better. And then I sure. was like, and, but I was like, I don't know how much more I could do, but I was like, I want it. I wish. And I got to town and I was like, they're done. I was like, I'm done. I went and looked at them the night before. I was like, they're done. I'm not changing anything anymore <laughs> i'm not altering anything anymore they're going as is i'm just going to relax try to get some rest and i did so it's nice that's and, uh, the, and even for those guys as well they not only get the presentations you you kind of dropped in the middle that you 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 fixed up two of their 2030s i mean that's that's exactly valuable so. even that straight up there the guy got two of his 2030s going again on on the spot yeah it's nice that there are these like how to say um in the retro gaming community we're often I, I, how to say thinking about price i guess we're all just individuals because we're all just individuals we want a nice monitor we want to play our games maybe some people are a little well, well off so they can afford a, a better one or, or something like that but it's nice that there are people with not again throwing loads of money but there's an institution that says we have a certain amount of budget this is important to us we have a certain amount of budget to ensure restoration heritage ongoing maintenance to make sure these things keep going and it just so happens that that almost exactly overlaps with what we do with retro gaming so many examples you've told me about the way it's like yeah we're interested in this that part the video the aspect ratios the formats it's Dang, that's exactly what us nerds sit around thinking about all day. And they're an institution with budget who are keen to preserve this for, I don't know, the future's sake. It's, um, I don't know, it's nice. It's yeah, just, it's encouraging, you know. It's, it's nice. encouraging, yeah, encouraging. That thinking about it. And, but yeah. If, yeah, even if like what you're talking about, this is a perfect thing because now, um, if you think about it, it gives me the opportunity to have a, a more stable, uh, you know, source of revenue for business if i get these jobs lined up so that does not put stress on this business where the abilities to expand come into mm. play and um you know all it, it opens up a whole new doors of things for legitimate funding that i never really was kind of you know expecting or or whatever i mean i look sure. I, when i was growing up i always loved indiana jones and this is like the closest to Indiana Jones that I, I am. I'm like the museum's contractor to go out and save CRTs. If I could just get like, they're like, we need, we need, Mr. Steve, we need you to go get this amazing BVM <laughs> from the heart of the Nazi death camp. And it's like, somehow I get to go in and like foil we the Nazis' Hitler, plans. We need and Hitler's like BVM. <laughs> yeah. Hitler's yeah, been watching find, his propaganda go find on that, the BVM. That, that, like, yeah, there's just like Hitler's brain in a jar connected to a Sony BVM. You will not take my BVM! Uh, and just pulling the plug. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, this is as close as he gets to that. I'm not, I mean, I realize that when I talk to everybody from that world, the people that work in that on a day-to-day -day basis have extremely 
high levels of intelligence and like mm -hmm. knowledge stored in their heads. They all have multiple degrees mm -hmm. from universities. So this is the only way I'd probably ever get into um, working with them, you know? On a contract, yeah. it's, it's a cool story, like how you get in and do things you want to do. And and you, the way you get in, I, I think for you, is that you have been, first of all, we spoke about, I believe as well, you were very genuine. And that genuineness has come across to your YouTube channel and through your communications online. And that is what has come through. That's why you're get. I believe, why you're getting these opportunities. There are certainly other people out there with the same knowledge as you who knows maybe some guys have got more knowledge than you i don't know but you have been able to communicate that to the community in this really genuine way though if so if some museum guys like what the video games guys they like the monitors what and they you sit down and watch your videos and get like yeah okay this guy's the real deal because you were able to communicate you and your personality so well that yeah, I'll come in and help you. I care about what you do. And so I think it is a testament to your personality. And this is the some of these moments where it starts to pay off. This is these unexpected opportunities that if you just genuinely plug away, genuinely try, genuinely try to help people, you know, something happens. It's it's real yeah. nice. Yeah. It's yeah, and it felt good. It feels I mean it feels great to have so many people like that interested in something too mm. and so that was all you know it's just amazing really mm. um i i come away yeah i came away just like i can't b basically saying i can't believe i got paid you know to do that. <laughs> that's kind of the it's way awesome. i thought i was like i this is yeah. just so awesome i felt like i was riding high the whole way home just um off the experience and just like enjoying it and so yeah, I hope that it it definitely I get the opportunity to go other places and work with other people and just keep on doing it. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is, is if that happens, everybody everybody kind of wins. All this unseen, who knows? I mean, I'm not trying to like say that this is a big thing, but if you think about it, what if this display goes on and inspire somehow? Some kid twenty years from now is inspired uh, by something he sees in the way it's pictured at an art museum on the CRT. And that would have never been there if nobody cared about doing what we're doing here. And like That's that inspiration, what if that inspiration, you don't know what that could lead to, right? It's, it's the untapped potential of, of uh, humankind. <laughs> I love it. That's so, art. That is art. That is art. The, <sighs> So that's yeah. The third day we did the class, and then oh yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. We still got the or third day did the repairs, and then mm -hmm. the last thing I've got here is some pictures from this awesome store I was telling you about. That I oh yes, I, yes. So you got a chance yeah. to hit this secondhand store to wrap us up here. So yeah, to, to bring this us, will wrap home us up. Here. So with the nice, last nice. thing on um, the last day, I fixed tw two twenty thirties, and then we went to uh, before we went to lunch. He's like, let's go out to check out this uh, EPO is the name of this store and here's a plug for them who cares right they're small store it was like radio okay. i was like radio shack on crack it was awesome <laughs> it had everything i couldn't believe it man i went in there and it was just stuff stacked on top of each other buttons switches everything you would need for soldering anything like mm -hmm. um just random stuff all over the place and a ton of used old av equi equipment all over the place uh, i've got some crazy pictures of things so look, this was like something. It was a mm. Lexatron, Lexatron, com some kind of computer here with, that was still using floppy disks. We opened it up. It had the software still in here. It came with this printer that was the size of this. It had this widescreen monochrome monitor, and it still worked. It was mm. actually up in use in a business till 2018. <laughs> 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 to like scheduling. <laughs> of some kind of weird Imagine process that's 2018 you walk in and like here's your welcome to your first day at work here's right. your terminal <laughs> <laughs> and he's like yeah 750 bucks so i was like i didn't get it uh, but you could like look much. around look and it was just boxes stacked and stuff like look here's a flyback down here they yeah i was gonna say i just saw the word there right flyback there. yeah yeah they had that kind of stuff um of course i was most interested in the crt so this was a crt <laughs> a crt like rack i found just mm. stacked above here uh, some really cool like aesthetically old tvs uh one little pvm which is the just the composite one and he wanted 450 okay. for it so i was like ah oh, you're okay. dreaming uh, mate uh, exactly <laughs> you're dreaming. 
<laughs> You're dreaming, mate. Uh, so I let him keep that one. And then, like, here's something else. A bunch of people were in love with this special vintage black and white Panasonic uh, 125. Okay. I didn't buy it, obviously. Some cool stuff. Lots of just look at this stuff. Like random crap hanging oh, yeah. from the ceiling. Like welder helmets. I was like, where else can you go <laughs> get a welder helmet and a <laughs> bunch of CRTs and like an oil lantern and all kind of other tchotchke stuff. A uh, bunch of just cool. Like, oh, this was a, oh, something yeah. I'd never VCD? seen. A VCD player. I'd never seen that really in America. We were saying that must have come from like Japan or something. Right. Very Asian. Very much bigger yeah, in Asia. Yeah, because it was also bronze, like intentionally bronze colored like that. So that was cool. Mm. And a bunch Which just, is never I mean, really colored. Mm. Stacks of this kind of stuff from Betamax players to oh. VHS players, professional level, rack mountable stuff. Uh, all I mean, so much that it would take me like a month to look through it. Look at these; these were video phones from oh, cool. like the 1980s. They had uh -huh. the cameras still; said they worked. They <laughs> so oh they each had a CRT monitor, and mm. the video camera would do black and white, and you'd see somebody on that monitor. Had the phones, everything. I'd never seen one of those, so I thought I'd. Look at that. And oh, there's the one I took home. One of them. I bought this, something I've been mm -hmm. looking for forever. And they were just, when I bought it with the people that, you know, the guy who went with me and hit one of these, and a, and a lady who worked in there with him, they were really super cool. And they're like, yeah, let's go out to the store. We'll show you some stuff. And they were like, you did it. You actually got, this is so perfect. You found a tech, in Texas, you found an original prison CRT. And I've been so looking cool. for this forever this is legit um it's oh. got the prisoner's name mm -hmm. his uh serial number, number i guess yeah that's his number and the date it was approved and then initial huh. and it's filthy but it's see the thing is i've never found one that's 13 inches this one's 13 yeah. inches and what size are they usually i've only seen 19 inch ones now i know yeah. there's 13 inch ones but i've never seen 19 inch ones for sale or for 13 mm. for sale and a lot of times people would still cut a circle out of the plastic and like try to stash things in it. So there's always like a hole cut out of it. So like a ghetto hole cut inside of it. Because it's supposed to so be So that was clear, the idea. So. That's why it's clear. So you can't what, right. hide Right. But this one was intact, fully okay. intact and fully legit okay. because it does like it doesn't have a speaker on it. Because okay. I've talked about that before. Because you piss your neighbors off and they beat the hell out of you. Oh, so prison TVs don't have speakers. No speaker in it at all. It's wired up with a, uh, a audio jack on the side and you okay. can plug in your headphones. That's it. Okay. And then it's got buttons on the front and then it only has RF coax in because you're only allowed to get what they're going to control. They don't let you have anything else besides whatever yeah, they have, the okay. five channels or 20 channels they give you in jail. They, they'll let you have that. And yeah, that, so that's the legit ones because there's also ones Dope. that there's also ones that don't have this that would be for sale that would have like a speaker added that were sold mm. like as a novelty. And then I bought this, another oh, one of these from the store for, uh, so here's the deal. I paid this one and this one has the best picture I've ever, like way better than the other one I actually have that I did a video okay. on. It's not the so exact how, same model. Is that model. screen? What size 13. is that screen? 13, 13 also. Okay. So that's what I wanted. 13. I only nice, like to nice, buy nice, 13s. Nice. Um, so that one, I paid 75 for that one with the remote clean. Okay. 75 bucks. But I was definitely wanting to support this store. Okay. This one did not have the remote. I paid 135 for it. Right. So that's how much I paid for those two. That's about the highest it's you're probably right. going to get for that. But yeah. I was, for me, I was like blown away. I was like, you sell CRTs? I'll, uh, I'm definitely buying them from you for so, a prison CRT. I mean, that's something that's a, something I would have paid, that's it. I would have paid yeah. probably a $500 for that if yeah, they didn't know okay. that. So it's interesting <laughs> what you said, that Sony one that you've got, the other one is a 13, yeah, you said 13 inch yes. and this comes back to this thing that, uh, I think we spoke about on a previous podcast that here in Europe, the TVs all seem to have like one inch, they're the same tube. But they're, oh, yeah. they're listed as one inch larger. Like I've got a 9044 D BVM, nine inch, but it's the same as your eight inch BVM. And yeah. now I think about it, 
my sitting right here is my consumer Trinitron as well, and it's 14 inch listed, but I'm willing to bet it's exactly the same <laughs> size. There's some. <laughs> yeah, going I don't on understand that. that. It was like, I don't know. I, I have no idea what was going on with that. Something with the sizes there. So that's cool. I don't know that why they did that. Is, because I've got that uh, perfect. I've got it's my fourteen like sitting got right one here. One inch bigger screens and in, in other no, worlds. No, I don't think so. I don't think they... fortune. All the tubes were being made from the same spots. I'm sure, especially for right. Sony. I don't understand why they did that, but that's so a great that, size. That's why I've got I've got that's my fourteen why, that's here my favorite for that same size, reason. And that's what I Real that's nice. what I that's what I get. The last thing I bought was this bad ass. <laughs> uh, sequencing power supply this i figured this out this was originally made for like hooking up a ton of uh, uh, audio equipment like if you're doing a a, a show for uh, if you're a rock band you know mm -hmm. you can plug all your stuff in and this clears up your ground so it makes it super clean and it doesn't add any interference i was like oh this sounds great for a CR crts and stuff yeah, it's rack yeah. mountable it's high quality as i'll get out it's got a it tells me the voltage exactly here Mm -hmm. uh, that's coming in. I can actually press this button and it tells me the temperature okay. of everything. Uh -huh. And it's got nine, nine power outlets in it, outputs, switchable. And it even has a spot here to hook into an oscilloscope so you huh. could read even further stuff. Oh, that's great, on man. There. That's really cool. I said, it's yeah, 60 bucks. Doing 60 bucks. Hey, so 60 right. bucks. I was 60 like, bucks. uh, yeah, I'm taking that for 60 bucks. So, I don't know. I thought that was a really cool thing. I had been thinking about that. Honestly, funny enough, the week before I left, I was like, mm -hmm. what about power? Like, what about power uh, conditioning? They were like, we have quality a quality power. Yeah. yeah. They asked me, oh shit, we should, we should listen to this. They were telling, I was talking to the guys from New York and they were like, uh, I was like, what's some of the crazy stuff you've seen happen to your CRTs mm -hmm. in service or something? And they were like, well, we were going to ask you about this one. It was a Dotronics monitor back to the one that was the cubes that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. It was one of those, and it was in a huge video wall presentation at the at the uh, museum. And uh, so this is the one that we're talking about. It's one Something of those. Something like that, yeah. It was in a big wall, and when one day they uh, hit the power on, and they would all simultaneously, they'll all do their degaussing at once. Uh -huh. So it's a giant... <laughs> you know, it's oh, like the that most, huge! Like yeah, when they 50, all dig at once, fifty of them bong at once, and they said all of a sudden one of them sparked and started smoking, and they went inside and it had snapped the tube at the neck, uh, and they were like, "Have you?" And I was like, "I was like, I don't this." I was like, "I I don't have any. I've never heard of that." I said, "But it does. It it's." you know, physically sounds possible. Mm -hmm. And I was like, considering we were looking at the quality of the Dotronics monitors and they're all consumers grade tubes. Mm. Uh, those aren't going to be the same high quality as the Sony ones that are professional tubes. So I said, absolutely. The possibility is there. You guys are literally putting it through harder testing than anyone would possibly be able to. I was like, right. this is the, so I say, yeah, absolutely. I could see that vibration from all those different at things once in the power draw. Up. The B, one of the the BVMs that I have in the on screen menu when they're linked, there is some option about like a degauss offset or something. Yeah, which as I've understood was to protect for that exact circumstance that see, they would degauss at slightly different moments to avoid that drain at, at all at once, that voltage drain or spike all at once. See you next time you need to come with me so you can sit there and say, oh, this is the one, Steve, here. Here's the answer. It's phone a friend. I'm going to be the offsider. I'll be Robin to the Look Batman. Here. Here. here he is. So, yeah, I don't know. I want to keep this kind of a program going. I've got some ideas. Some people have reached out to me, um, and I might talk to the museum about this. I don't want them to, like, have to worry. Like, I don't want it to be like, oh, I'm sorry, we can't get funding for it. But what if, mm. what if they provided the space possibly – and I offered like 10 slots for people to locally come to this conference. And mm -hmm. like you would pay three, $400 for two days of tickets. And I mean, that's not for everybody, but it would literally be the closest you would get to seeing, you know, right. there's a, probably 10 people around the country who would want to mm -hmm. do that for whatever reason. So I Especially was like, if what you had, if, like Houston, not a bad place to come. Nice hub, right. 
Good to get a flight. Not so bad to come to Houston for a couple of days. Yeah, there's a lot of things to do if you want mm. to, especially it's not like somewhere in the middle of nowhere. It's great. Right. You know, you got the museum. So um, plus you get a chance to meet other people. So I feel like that might be an idea also to help out if it's like something where mm. that could help offset the cost basically for me to have to go and do with this work for you know, sure. uh, basically a month oh, job. So many opportunities. Yeah. Man. So... Yeah, from now, so now I've got a thousand things to follow up on and then a no, thousand I bet. things to fix. So what do you got in the next working. week? Now you're back, you've, yeah, you're kind of recovering. Cool. Is it just getting back to the grind and do get back to the TVs that you've got to work on there? Yeah, I tried uh, I tried fiddling with one of Bob's PVMs last night when I <laughs> opened it up and it's a 14L5 and it just shuts itself off and power cycles on its own mm. for some reason. So I changed a little resistor that didn't fix it. So I think it needs to recap in the power board, which is like a pain. So yeah, okay, that's I've got that one. I'm going to just try to get as many done kind of cranked out. I've honestly got like three videos. I've had no time to edit them. I'm hoping mm. to get one edited this week and out. Cause it's been like 10 days since I've <laughs> had anything, which is unheard of for my channel kind of, but that's, I think that's just what's going to happen right now for a little bit is I've got too much work to really worry about. Um, you know, till I get caught up, it's more important mm, that I sure. get get some things flux in and out of the shop right now that have been here mm -hmm. waiting. So that's what we'll be doing. I've got a bunch of things though. Cool. What man. about you? What oh, are you going to be great. working on now? Uh, so it's still, it's still more S video. Are you waiting for Mike's? Yeah, I got to talk to Mike. Actually, I'll get back. See, Mike. Oh, I forgot to give the shout out to Mike. Mike Simone, if you are still listening at one hour and 30 minutes, Mike Simone, you need to come on this podcast, all right? Mike's, <laughs> Mike's a nice guy. He's, I really, I, Mike's cool, but he's a little bit shy and I know he's a little bit hesitant and he's like, he wants to come on, but he keeps like t -t 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 shuffling around yeah. the time and the yeah. date. And I'm like, Mike, set a time. And then he's like, well, I've got the Central American time. It's going to be late. I don't care, Mike. I'll be on the 3 a.m. <laughs> like, we did it for Shank. Like, I'll do it for you. Oh, so that's one thing I was going to tell you. I was going to leave town and I had been texting with Shank. And I was like, I'll come by and see you the last day, Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, but Because uh, he's four hours away from where I was staying in um, another area of Texas. So I was like, I'll swing through there. And it, Four it, hours? It, it's a long time to just swing well, by. Well, it, it only added like one hour total to my uh, trip. Okay, like yeah, it yeah, would have yeah. been a doable thing. If it wouldn't have been yeah. doable, I was like, no way, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, um, now this is pretty tragic, but I didn't know this. My grandfather had passed away in a nursing home the beginning of the week when all mm. this presentations went on and nobody wanted to tell me to mess with <laughs> me. Because I knew, okay, yeah. Till the day, last day. So... I found out about that and I was like, look, Shank, I've got to go back home. Mm. And then he was like, completely understandable. I was like, I, I got to just, I was like, I've been out now. I've got to just get back. I can't probably spend another day and then I'll add another day to the trip. So I wound up coming back, but then he was like, he texted me the same day and he's like, man, I, this is so funny. He was dusting like the inside of a CRT or something and a bunch of dust got into his sinuses, poor guy. And he got like a, a, a sinus infection. And oh, so he's shit. like, I'm stuck in bed. I could, we couldn't have hung out anyway. And I was like, well, thank goodness. It didn't make the trip <laughs> to have bloke. to leave. Yeah. Oh, dang. So, yeah, I was going to so, go uh, see him. I was like, well, next time we'll, we'll hang out. Next Hopefully time. So better. I'm hoping to hoping to talk to Mike. Uh, besides that, I've, I pumped out my videos. I'm still working on those and doing a little bit of uh, actually probably tomorrow. I need to focus on the comedy business stuff. Um, we are in September. We're presenting... Uh, Monty Python star John Cleese here in Tallinn. So, you are? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're the, the local wow, promoters that's, for that. That's so pretty amazing. The dates got moved around a few times with the pandemic, but we got the... It was supposed to be next year just to really give it the pandemic time, but we got an opportunity to do him in September this year and we said, let's do it, let's do it. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're doing that in Tallinn and, and in Riga as well. So a lot of preparations for John Cleese to... It's really cool that he's going to come and... That is uh, yeah, sorry. awesome. That's Slim like, good, I can't yeah, wait still... to see how that goes. Mm, so now yeah, I so get he's to bug you about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, awesome. looking, so I'll be doing that. So I'm on and on. I'm doing a bit of a uh, few videos this week and working on the comedy stuff. So I'll nicely, nicely yeah. glide through the rest of the week. It'll be all good. Well, good. Lewis will carry the, uh, Lewis will carry the uh, entertainment load for us this next week. 
With that's what I'm doing. I'm pumping. I got this one. He's got the I got video. The, I got so a, you can go there. I got a tell him, tell him you dreaming video coming out. Yeah, so next that's week. what I want to see. Trying man, to get Mike. Oh, God damn it, Mike! Come on. Uh, the <laughs> you could do the, the same thing, thing you so. did with. Uh, who was it? Just uh, um, why well, can't I think of his name? Uh, Pork Shop. You know, Pork Shop, Mister. Yeah, I think he's all right. I don't think it's that. I think it's not a video thing. I okay. think he's just a little shy. That's all. He's yeah. he's all right. You know, Mike. He's clearly a very intelligent guy, great engineer. Uh, you know, working hard. He's always working hard at improving the S video cores. He's, he's like, like, oh, I can't talk. Got to keep coding the S video <laughs> cores. I'm like, he's oh, been, okay, Mike. He's been Morris. asking me about <laughs> finding him an eight inch PVM or something. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, he's I'm trying to, I'm trying to help him find something locally because you know, anytime you send something across those hmm. borders, they're gonna usually yeah, tax it's not you gonna go for it. So, oh I'm really? Like, Some you, tax? I oh. mean, I think right. It's just, just like you, you've got. I don't know what the exact rate is. It's hard to tell with all these treaties and crap where they negotiate tax rates. So if he's in Canada. So if oh, I go ship him Canada. something, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So if he sh- if I ship him something across the border, I'm like, it's gonna mm. be, you're gonna risk it going through customs and being torn to pieces by somebody yeah, who's pissed off yeah, at the yeah, world, yeah. <laughs> and, or you're gonna spend an arm and a leg getting it through it. So I don't know. Yeah. I was trying to find somebody in Canada, so maybe I can find somebody in Discord or something. But All right. yeah, I'd love to have him on. I'd love to talk to him. We've been talking so much about this S video stuff. So much yeah, more I stuff's know, coming down the pipeline again constantly for the mister that was really another good. thing i was starting to talk to them about was the mister project mm-hmm. um, i was trying to plant seeds so that i could help them come up with options mm-hmm. you know for other video solutions not just crt stuff right sure so like again we were talking about scalers and things things that they could mm-hmm. also think about if they needed help when they needed i mean that was a good thing again about this whole trip um, a lot of people came up to me afterwards i tried to Talk one on one with every single one of them. I did talk one on one, got to know them. And a lot of them asked me if, like, oh, can I just send you stuff? Can I just send you some information and look at it and tell me what you okay. think? These are forms we've been using at the museum for years. What do you think of them? And I'm like, all right, That's sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Send please. It over. I'll be glad to. So. Happy to help. We'll we'll keep we'll keep letting everybody know how this whole thing works out. I think that's a lot of fun about the whole thing too. Is it is here these adventures are great i'm i'm excited to to hear about everything so let's wrap it up there steve thanks for telling your adventures uh this thank you everyone for going through the podcast i hope you enjoyed these stories as much as i did uh is an evolving thing we're really hearing about what's happening so steve thank you very much and uh everyone else see you next time bye see you next time